Hi, I'm now going to show you how to stitch images that you acquired using tiling uh, on the iX81 with Velocity. So uh, what I have open here on the screen is a PDF uh, of the instructions, and we're just going to go through these things uh, step by step to get this done. So the first step is to open Fiji. Let's go ahead and do that. Fiji has just been opened. It's asking me whether I want to start the updater and ignore this. Um, let's look at the next step. The next step is to use the MSL flat fielding plugin to correct for the illumination. So if you recall, we took a blank image. Uh, now we're going to use that blank image to correct uh, for uneven illumination. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to plugins, MSL, flat, BF, IX81 version 2. Um, you can get these macros from our uh, website in the resources page. They are already installed on the IX81 if you uh, perform uh, that this stitching procedure there. They're also installed on our workstation. Independent of where you do the stitching, I strongly recommend that you save the data to a local hard drive as, a tr as opposed to trying to do this over the network. Uh, so whichever computer you do it, just make sure that the data is on that computer that you've moved it there. Okay, so let's do the flat fielding. I'm going to select the proper um, uh, macro, which is this one. Uh, it's asking me what objective I want to use. Uh, we want to use 10x because that's how we acquired the data. And uh, I've put the data on my desktop. Uh, so here's the data folder. Um, and it's asking me to select the blank image. So I've found the blank image, it's this one, I'm gonna click on it. And then it's going to ask me to find the data. So the data isn't uh, this folder, it's the folder inside of this one that says stitched. That's where the data is, so I need to select that one. And remember, you don't wanna put your blank image uh, together with your uh, images from the tiling, uh, because that, if you forget to then remove the blank image, that's gonna screw up the, the stitching. Uh, on a normal situation, you wouldn't mind doing that. In fact, it would be more convenient. But for these stitching things, you don't want the blank image to be in the same folder as the tiled images. So I'm going to select this. And now what's going on is it is um, in here. It has created a flat fielded images. And it's going through every single one of these and adjusting it based on the blank to create a flatter image. So this can take a while. Um, and when it's concluded, it will say uh, something like complete. I think it's pretty close. And it's done. So now here, we have the same images, uh, but they are have been flat fielded. So the illumination is more even. Let's see what the next step is. So the next step is to open plugin stitching, grid collection stitching, and use the following settings. So I'm going to put this to one side. I'm going to go to Fiji. And I'm going to say plugins, stitching, grid collection stitching. So use the following settings, grid snake by rows. Here's where we're telling it how the microscope acquired the images. Order, write, and down. That's correct. Grid size. Input X and Y dimensions of the grid. So here is where it becomes important to determine what those were. And if you recall, uh, we thought that the Y dimension might be something like uh, uh, 7 or 8. And so what we need to do is look at the total number, which is 96. If we divide that by, let's say, 8, then that means that the, uh, the number of columns was 12. So if we look at 12 uh, here, uh, that means that the microscope should have been acquiring this way. And then in 12, it should have switched down to 13 and then started acquiring uh, that way. And so if that's true, then the bottom right-hand corner of uh, this tile number 12 should be the top right hand corner of tile number 13. And in fact, you can see it is. These little blobs here correspond to these. Uh, so, so everything is, is, uh, is correct. That means that we had 12. Uh, so our, our sort of idea for how many there are was correct. So we have 12 
uh, columns and eight rows. If you look here, input the overlap you used for acquisition, that's 10%. So I need to put it there. The first file index is one. Um, the directory with your tiles, so that's this directory, so stitched flat fielded images. Remember to use the directory with the flat fielded tiles. Just end that there. Uh, the file names for the tiles. So, so the file names are 001, 002, 003. The syntax of that in this uh, plugin is to uh, just put in three lowercase i's in brackets dot tiff. It'll understand that it's uh, a sort of three numbers that increment. Um, fusion method, you want to use minimum intensity. Uh, the reason is if you don't do this, and there are uh, a lot of corners with kind of just white splotches, it won't be able to um, to stitch these, and it'll just put them randomly at other locations. So if you use something like linear blending, there will be sort of random tiles in your in, in your image at the end that will probably look whiter. Uh, if you use minimum intensity, that problem does not occur. Uh, if you have a sample where there aren't really corners, you can use linear blending. You'll probably be fine. Um, the default for other imaging settings should work. I like to use uh, computation parameters, save computation time, but use more RAM uh, to speed things up if I'm on a computer that has a lot of RAM. Uh, if you're not, then just say save memory. Uh, I think the RAM on my computer should be handled this just fine, so I'm just gonna switch there so it goes a little bit faster. When you click OK, uh, what you'll see is that the log will show a lot of information about how it's aligning um, all the images relative to each other uh, and eventually it'll scroll down really quickly with a bunch of parameters that you really don't need to pay that much attention to. You can see there's 96 and it's sort of doing all the pairs of alignments and then you see all these correlations uh, and eventually it will create uh, a stitched image. So now it is creating, uh, fusing all those tiles into one giant image and it does it um, in three channels, red, green, and blue. Um, so you can see channel two of two, and then channel three of three, and eventually we'll have a large tiled image and we can see how well the stitching did. Okay, so that's pretty good. You shouldn't worry about these, these corners, how it mangled them, because it doesn't really have a lot of information to know how to align those properly. The important part is that this part, this actual sample, looks good. Um, so this is great. Let's look at what the next step is. Uh, crop the part of the image of interest. Okay, let's do that. We select this rectangle tool. Uh, I want to make sure I don't miss anything. Um, I'm not missing anything there. This looks good. I'm going to um, select there and then go to edit. Uh, excuse me, not edit. Image. Crop. Okay, there we go. Let's see the next step. The next step is to do image type RGB color. So this image has three uh, channels which are independent. We, we don't want that. We just want to go to image type RGB color. And so it'll make an image that where the channels are all sort of merged. Uh, the next step is to add white or a background color to fill in non-stitched parts if needed. You can use the dropper and paint can tools to do this. So um, what we can do is go here. If we double click this uh, and we click this, these two colors become black and white, and if we click this arrow, the four, um, foreground color becomes white. So we can now use the paint can to fill this in with white. Now you can see that uh, the white is very noticeable, so we want something that's more like this background. Um, so to do that, we'll go to the dropper again, and we'll just click somewhere like here, and then fill it in with that color. And you can see it's a little bit less noticeable. Again, it doesn't really matter. Um, strictly speaking what color we use. We just want it to be something that's not very noticeable um, so we don't have those sort of ugly uh, black uh, kind of rectangles on the edges of the sample. Okay, recommended. Set scale and add scale bar. So to set the scale uh, we can go to analyze, set scale, and here we need to tell it, okay, one pixel uh, with the 10x objective using the bright field camera is 0 0.61. I got that off the table on the wall in the room uh, with the iX81. And the un unit of length is microns. We say OK. Now uh, that it knows the scaling of this image, we can go to Analyze Tools, Scale Bar, 
and add a scale bar of whatever size we want. For example, we could add a 500 micron scale bar. We could make the color black. We could make it thicker if we wanted. We could remove the text, etc., etc. And we're just going to say OK. And now we can save this image. So I'm going to save it uh, here. I'm going to call it yeah, fused is fine. I'm going to save it. And so now, uh, once it's saved, you can see, you can double click on it and see it in the Windows Photo Viewer. Now notice uh, a few things. So first there's this black line here and then the scale bar didn't appear. If you're in a situation where the scale bar doesn't appear, just go back to Fiji and run the command called flatten. So I don't remember where it is in the menu structure in Fiji, so if you just click here and write flatten, um, it'll find it and then you can just run it. It's actually an image overlay flatten. So if you go to image, overlay, flatten, you get that command. It's also control shift F. Also we can click here and say run. Okay, so now um, this has been embedded into the image. So if I save this one and then look at that image, if I double click on it, now you can see that the scale bar um, has been embedded into the image. All right, uh, we forgot one other thing which was um, to deal with this, and so I can use the paint can again. It's just a one pixel strip. There we go. I'll just save it again, replace it. There it is. And if I double click on it, you can see that's gone. Everything looks good. Okay. Uh, so uh, that's how you uh, stitched an image, stitch in images that you've acquired using the tiling mode on the iX81. As always, uh, please let me know if you have any questions.